Hey, Suffield, Connecticut homeowners, what's ahead for mortgage rates and the housing market? Get the answers in this month's Suffield, Connecticut housing market update. I'm Stephanie Salerno, a local realtor in Suffield, Connecticut, licensed in Connecticut and Massachusetts, here to give you the local insights and scoops on the housing market. And before I move on, if this information is useful, please hit that subscribe button below to receive all future Suffield, Connecticut housing market updates. Okay, now for Suffield in September, there were a total of 16 homes sold, and that's actually down 6% from 2023. 11 new listings came on the market and that's flat from 2023. The sales price to list price ratio was 103.6% and that's down 2%. And the average sale price per square foot was $264 and that's actually up 19%. September's average sale price was $512,000 and that's up 17% from 2023. And the average days on market was 76 and that's down 31% from 2023. And September's month supply of inventory was 1.62 months, and that's down 29% from August of 2023 and down from 2.55 months in just August of 2024. Now, how that works is six months is considered a balanced market. So anything more than six months is a buyer's market and anything less than six months is a seller's market. So being at 1.62 months, we're very much in a seller's market and we have a way to go before we even hit a balanced market. There's a lot of anticipation around what's to come for the housing market. I'm going to do my best to break down what the experts are predicting for 2025. We're going over several key topics today, but first we're gonna start with mortgage rates. Then we're gonna talk about total home sales and then we're gonna get into home prices as well. I look into 2025 with some optimism as we're seeing relief on mortgage rates, which will certainly help ease affordability challenges and inventory challenges. Now I'm going to start with mortgage rates, but I do urge you to look back to September's housing market update, where we really do a deep dive on mortgage rates and how it's tied to the Fed's decision that happened in September. Or our Salerno Team Talk episode, where I'm with Brad Salerno, Brad the Mortgage Guy, where we really nerd out on mortgage rates and how it all really works. But I digress. Let's dive in here with this quote from Realtor.com. We expect the economy to land softly and housing inventory to continue to recover. This should put downward pressure on mortgage rates this fall and winter and will set the stage for a much better season for home buyers in 2025. I mean, that's all really what we want to hear, a much better season for 2025. It's certainly what we're looking for. We've been seeing some easing in mortgage rates already, and that has certainly helped our affordability challenges. And nationally, we are seeing inventory rise, though we're yet to experience that in Suffield locally. We're seeing all of these signs that are setting up a much better environment for next year. So let's break down what that really means, because as mortgage rates continue to ease, and I know that's what's on everybody's mind, that's really going to set the stage for how 2025 plays out. And it's going to be highly dependent upon the economic factors coming in, really what's happening with inflation and unemployment. All those different things really come into the equation and set the stage for what's going to happen next year. And right now, the signs are good. All of these things are moving in the right direction, and we're going to be keeping our eye on them for you. And I think what we're already seeing this year is this downward trend, and I think we're going to continue to see that in the next 6, 12, and even 18 months. The expectation is that mortgage rates should continue to ease. Now, let me show you what those projections look like, because I think that's really where you start to see what everyone's saying. But these are 2025 mortgage rate projections from Fannie Mae, MBA, and Wells Fargo. And when you look at them all together, that column over in the right, you can see a general easing over the next year, maybe into the fives, maybe into the high fives. Now that's not a significant jump from where we are today, but it's certainly the case that every little quarter point matters and helps with buying power. And I think it's really important to remember that this is going to be volatile. This is going to be a bumpy ride. It's not going to be a straight downward trend as the economic data comes in and informs each of these things. These factors that we look for and that we watch in the markets, all of that is going to be a little bit of up and down. And we've already been seeing that since rates have come down in September. Now, I don't care what anyone says, if we actually try to predict what the mortgage interest rates will be, you'll be wrong. We don't have a crystal ball. So taking the best possible data that we have right now, the best projections out there, everything that we're looking at, the historical signs that we can see, mortgage rates are expected to ease slightly over the next 6, 12, 18 months. And that's great signs for our buyers out there and our home sellers who will be buyers. And if you look at it a different way, as this here is the mortgage rates and projection side, you can see the dotted line or the projections over the next year from the same three forecasters. So certainly Certainly coming down off a peak from a year ago and definitely not as low as what we saw in 2020 and 2021 when we hit those historic lows. 
That's not where we're headed, but we're certainly moving in the right direction. Now it's important to pause here to see what this really means because as mortgage rates decline and affordability improves, that's going to take a lot of people off the sidelines. The director and senior economist at Wells Fargo said that lower financing costs will likely boost demand by pulling affordability crunch buyers off the sidelines. That's a really big deal because there's a lot of people who had been waiting and who are still waiting because they don't quite yet understand the difference it's going to make and even how much buying power you have right now, even compared to last year. I mean, for example, with a $500,000 loan, compared to this time last year, the monthly mortgage rate is decreased by $500. That's a massive change. We're gonna spend more time on that in the coming months, I am sure. But if you take a look at this survey from Bankrate, it says that more than half of homeowners would be motivated to buy with rates under 6%. And on the sell side, over one third of homeowners would be motivated to sell with rates under 6%. So what people are saying as rates are coming down, they're saying, well, now it's time to do something. Not everyone, it's not going to be a massive influx, but we're certainly gonna see more buyers jump in and we're gonna see more sellers feeling less rate locked. And what that's going to do is it's going to unlock more inventory. And when we unlock more inventory, that means we have more home sales. And so when we think about 2025, I want to walk you through what's projected for home sales because more buyers, more demand, more inventory, all of these things mean more opportunity for our home buyers and our home sellers that are out in the market. So let's take a look at what the experts are saying. This is total home sales and they are forecasted to rise next year. So the current pace right now, if you look over on the right, is that we will sell about 4.7 million homes in 2024. Now this is a combination of existing homes and new construction. And so 4.7 million certainly is not anything compared to what we saw before. As you look back to 2019, it's certainly not even close to 2020 or 2021 when everyone was buying and selling a home. And then you see it drop off over the past couple of years as we've seen affordability crunch with higher borrowing costs, higher prices. But as we look into next year, experts are projecting about 5.4 million homes to sell in this country. So certainly an uptick and definitely something that will help help invigorate the market, no doubt. And I do believe that when we look back in time from a few years from now, when we look back at 2024, that will probably be the bottom of the transaction volume and it should tick up from there. We're seeing more homes built, we're seeing financing costs come down, we're seeing prices moderate, and all of these things should drive more transactions in the market. And that's good news for our home buyers and our home sellers out there. So you've heard me say it before, the best time to buy or sell is when the timing is right for you. It is impossible to perfectly time the market. And I think this quote from Business Insider is really important in that context because it says, waiting until next spring or summer should also give you more inventory to choose from, but you'll likely be up against greater competition since it's the peak buying season. So we know transactions are expected to increase next year, but we have a lot of people sitting on the sidelines saying, well, if I wait for mortgage rates come down, will I get a better deal next year? But what they're going to be doing is just kind of delaying the inevitable as they'll likely be back in a more competitive environment as more people are waiting because they're waiting for that ideal rate environment. We're going to see more competition in the market and that will definitely drive more sales, but it's going to be a more challenging environment for our buyers out there. And so for our homeowners that are thinking of selling and have to buy in order to sell, that will create a potentially more challenging situation for there too. Okay, so next what I wanna talk about is as this is happening and as we see the increase in demand, what will that mean for home prices? So if we think about home prices, more demand, more buyers in the market, and inventory is still really tight. So sure, it's growing, even though we haven't seen that locally yet, but we certainly don't have a surplus. Inventory is still low nationally. So what that means is continued upward pressure on pricing. So if we look at what the forecast is for next year, 2025 home price forecast, we can see from 10 different entities that it's roughly three to 4% home price appreciation, most experts are saying. And if you average them all together, about two and a half percent appreciation nationally. But we know that inventory is still lower than the demand that we have. And we can anticipate demand increasing next year. And that is going to put upward pressure on home prices. So what I also see when I look at this is more moderate appreciation, not the exponential rise that we've had a couple years ago. I would say this is healthier and more sustainable because if you look back in time, we really did have unsustainable home price growth for quite some time. And it priced a lot of people out of the market. And what we see for next year is inventory rising as mortgage rates are coming down 
alone, prices start to moderate as we look into 2025 and beyond. So this is the national look, and it's important to remember that real estate is a local business. And in Suffield, we have seen appreciation continue to be on the rise. Whereas other markets, it may be flat, or even we might have seen some mild declines in some markets. And I do believe this is very much tied to the new construction being built. Locally, we have not had new construction keep up with the buyer demand, and that has greatly impacted inventory and has kept upward pressure on pricing. Lance Lambert said, even if the average national home price forecast for 2025 is correct, it's possible that some regional housing markets could see mild home price declines, while some markets could still see elevated appreciation. That has been, after all, the case this year. It's really all about supply and demand in the local Local markets. And locally, we're still very tight in inventory, with Suffield, as we saw earlier, only being 1.62 months inventory. So, to sum it up right here, it's really said best by Selma Hep from CoreLogic, who said, Currently, economic projections for 2025 are also positive, which points to a positive outlook for the housing market. So, we've talked a lot about the optimism that we see and the positive projections for 2025. Mortgage rates are expected to continue to ease, and that could help improve our inventory challenges and can certainly help with affordability and your buying power. And that will equal more opportunity for anybody that has been maybe waiting in the sidelines. If you want to talk more about any of this information or have any questions, let's connect. And worried about how to sell and buy at the same time, it can be done. We have proven systems and strategies to help you make a seamless move. Whether you're looking to sell or just might want to talk about what options exist for you, please reach out as I'm here to help you with all your real estate goals. And if you're just curious what your home might be worth, click that link below for an instant home value opinion. As a local realtor in Suffield, Connecticut, I strive to provide you with the local insights to help you make a move with confidence. If you found this information useful, please give us a like and share this information with a friend. And all right, this is your October Suffield, Connecticut housing market update. We'll see you next month.